Big Ball, I have absolutely no idea what there is to talk about today, but there's always something. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel. All right, let's start with this one. Terence Crawford warns Errol Spence, if he gets out of line, I swear to God. Okay, um, it's starting to get a little heated between these two, um, as expected. Look, both of them know what's at stake. It's a big fight. It doesn't get any bigger than this. You guys know how excited I am for this one, July 29th. You know, I was thinking the other day, will this fight, not that it matters, I don't really care, but let's put it out there. Will this fight do over a million pay-per-view buys? Like, does it feel that big? And this is more, I guess, a question for the casual fans. For hardcore boxing fans, this is, again, this is as big as it gets. Like, this is pound for pound number one versus pound for pound number four or five. That's what a lot of people think. So it doesn't get any bigger, but I just wonder if it's crossed over to the casual fans, the ones that dip their toes in and out of the sport. I'm not sure if it's done the same as uh, Ryan Tank did. Like Ryan Tank definitely crossed over to non-boxing fans, has this one. And if it hasn't, maybe it struggles to get to that million. Um, and, and not just because, not because it's not a big fight for casual fans or non-boxing fans, just I guess the illegal streaming has to be brought into it as well. I mean, people illegally stream a lot trust me I kind of know some of the numbers behind the scenes and it's an incredible amount it really is to the point where boxers are now saying I think Errol even said please don't stream it like buy it you don't hear boxers saying that so they know the numbers of illegal streams um, I think it gets a million um, just because I think they're going to get a lot of free publicity um, and, and what I mean by that is both of these guys um have massive followings from like NBA players and NFL players who would tweet and talk about it. And I mean, someone like Damian Lillard, who's a massive, massive boxing fan. I don't know how many millions of followers that he's got. As soon as he tweets it or posts it, that's it. That then all goes to his fans. So I think it'll do a million, but it's going to be close. Uh, Johnny Nelson, not buying that bullshit that nobody wants to fight Tyson Fury. I, I said this on a video the other day. I'm not buying that either. Um, like... These guys will fight. They're not scared. They want to get paid. That's just it. And and if um, Tyson Fury doesn't want to pay them what they think their worth is, then he's going to struggle to get an opponent. There will be some that will take low ball money, and I think they should, to get in the ring with Tyson Fury. Like, it isn't always about the money. And, like, don't get me wrong, know your worth. But surely there is a, a case of, I just want to fight the best heavyweight on the planet. I want to fight for a world title. I potentially want to fight at Wembley Stadium. And if I win... I mean, it's life-changing. It's, it's life-changing. I mean, look at Andy Ruiz when he took what some might have said was low money to fight AJ first time round. Beat AJ, he must have made a fortune second time round. So that's what can happen. So look, if you are, I don't know what names are being linked at the moment, a Bacoli, an Agit Kabayal or a Hergovic, you, you, take, you take the money. You take the money and back yourself. That's what you do. Hearn. You can't expect Charlo to be competitive against Canelo in a September fight. Um, no. Yes and no. You can expect him to be competitive to an extent, like for um, maybe three quarters of the fight. Like if it goes 12, he'll be competitive up until, I don't know, the ninth round. Um, but understand, this is a guy that's not fought for two years. And then even, even the not fought for two years, and um, before that, I think it was one fight a year in 2021. And I think one fight a year in 2020, I think. So he's just not been active. So not fought for two years. I'm thinking he's had two fights in four years, which it's just not enough. It's not enough. And he's no spring chicken anymore. I think Charlo is 33, 34. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's interesting that Herm would say that because... It looks like Jamal is front runner to get this Canelo fight now. And you would expect Hearn to maybe big it up a little bit, unless he's been told he's not working on that fight, um, which would be interesting to know. But um, yeah, it looks like that's going to happen. I, I, the only fight that sort of um, gets in the way of that is Dimitri Bivol. Um, it's not going to be Benavidez. Benavidez is going to fight Morel, which is an insanely good fight fight in like that's a 50 50 scrap for those of you that don't know about david morale do your research do your googles this guy can fight he can fight i watched him fight and i think this guy came in a bit late notice but when he fought falcao 
on the undercard of Tank Garcia and blew him away in one. Blew him away in one. This guy is such a good fighter. So, um, yeah, I think that's a great fight. So, literally, it is either Dimitri Bivol or Jamal Charlo. I, I don't want to hear Edgar Belanga. I don't want to hear that. Uh, Fury doesn't blame Usyk for wanting more money. Warns that he will annihilate him. Next. We shall move on very quickly. Um... Uh, Deontay Wilder to join Saudi Arabia's skill challenge promotions. Devin Haney on the verge of signing as well. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, Wilder, I kind of expect, or I'm not shocked at the news, I should say. Um, and I guess it makes it then easier now to get this AJ Wilder fight done. And this would make me feel like that we are close to getting it done now with him joining um, the skills challenge promotions. Devin Haney is a bit of a surprise. Devin Haney is a bit of a surprise. Um, look, he's been over there. He's in that region quite a lot, Devin Haney. Um, what does it do, though, for... like, What does it do for the fights that Devin Haney wants to have? Does that mean the majority of those fights now happen in Saudi Arabia or the Middle East? I'm, I'm not quite sure what it means for Devin Haney. Again, for Wilder, for his immediate future, his immediate future, for me... Suggest these next two fights will be in that region. Uh, Wilder, sorry, an AJ one. And if he wins and, I mean, if he wins and Usyk wins, then you can understand or, or maybe see Usyk happening over there as well. Um, look, man, I mean, Saudi Arabia have literally come into the sports market and I'm not going to say a, a taking over, but they are not just dipping their toes into it, they're dipping their whole bloody body into it. I mean, it's insane. I mean, you look at what's going on in football. I mean, they're signing everyone. I mean, Ronaldo's obviously gone over there, Benzema's over there, Kante's over there. For those of you that don't follow football, these are just top, top football names that I've just mentioned. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just, we all know what's going on with the golf and now boxing. I mean, they're not just putting on events. Like for the last couple of years, it's been a case of, they put on events. You go over there for some of the big fights. Now they're signing the fighters. That's that's different. That's very different. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens with Devin Haney. But for, for Wilder, going back to it, I guess it just means that it makes it easier for them to kind of control <clears throat> how easy it is to make AJ Wilder without any other sort of um, people from, I guess, the States getting involved. So, yeah. That's interesting. So, um, mm. that, I'm, I'm guessing that means no Al Heyman involvement. I know Wada had some strong words to say about Al Heyman recently in terms of getting paid. I think so. This is no Al Heyman. I wonder what it means for, um, who's his manager? Um, is it Shelley Finkel? I wonder what it means for Shelley Finkel. Yeah. Um, ben Shalom. Our understanding is the Smith versus Eubank rematch will happen. What is going on? <laughs> what is going on? Uh, a couple of days ago, I did a video talking about Conor Ben versus Eubank, um, September 23rd in Abu Dhabi. Um, this Smith, what's up? This Smith Eubank one's a strange one. Honestly, it almost seems as though Eubank is being pulled by a few different promoters, being pulled by um, Boxer being pulled by Matrim, like, okay, no, we can give you this. And Ben Shalom then says, no, 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 I'll up it. Here's a bit more. It's very strange. Um, but if you're Liam Smith, I know last time he was injured, so that's the reason the fight didn't happen. But surely if you're Liam Smith, you just want to get on with your career. You're coming off what some might say is a career best win against Eubank Jr. Some might say that. No world title, but some might say that. You want to now take advantage of that and get the big fights. You don't want to wait for Eubank to make his decision on whether or not he's fighting you or Conor Ben. Um, a bit annoying. Uh, Billum Smith um, react poor rematch would be brilliant if he beats Opataya. We can unify. Um, yeah, I don't know how much clamor there is for it. There might be more clamor if react poor uh, fights Opataya and Billum Smith rematches a Coley, and then the winners of that fight each other because whatever outcome that it's going to be a good fight, right? The finals will be good. That's four very good cruiserweights. Um, talking of cruiserweights, I spoke to Chevron Clark the other day um, who, who came off a good win on the Sonny Edwards undercard. He's not super far away, you know. I think he's going to fight for the British title. Um, so I think Isaac Chamberlain are going to, uh, is going to fight um, Lawal. The winner of that will fight Chevron Clark or Chevron Clark will fight the winner of that. Um, he's not too far away. I think he's... 
I think he could be a dark horse in this cruiserweight landscape. Um, before I looked at him as being a bit too small, but seeing him recently at the Haringey Cup, he's actually very thick, like very stocky, big neck. Uh, he could be an interesting addition to the top echelon, especially if he wins the British title. Uh, Adrian Broner's coach to Regis Progre. If you think AB is shot, let's make it happen. Progre would be AB, man. Come on. I mean, look, AB, we, we he's still got something. There's still something there, but Progre would beat him. I'm, I'm not fooled by Progre's recent performance against Zorilla. I mean, I think Zorilla was a bit negative and I think Progre just wasn't at his best. But Progre, for me, is at worst, at worst, the number two in the division. At worst. I think he's number one. I can understand how, and I said this about Tio. Tio deserves to have that because Tio beat Josh Taylor. But Progre is incredible. He really is. And I think he's far too good at this stage for Adrian Broner. Far too good. Um, Errol Spence on Crawford Clash. Hopefully, I don't break his face too bad. Boy, the war of the words between these two is starting to heat up. Uh, Natasha Jonas, Candy Wyatt, IBF Waterweight title fight added to July 1st Manchester show. Candy Wyatt. No idea who that is. And is there a belt on the line here? IBF. Candy Wyatt. Does that mean that Jessica McCaskill's been stripped of that belt? I know she... I don't know. I think she almost gave away a belt for Sandy Ryan. I.e. That's, that's how Sandy became champion. But I don't know. She, I can't remember her giving her a belt away. For this, let me. So, so I just want to quickly look at this. Um, yeah, this is the vacant title. She's given a belt up, or, or, or has been stripped of it. I'm not quite sure. Um, Jessica McCaskill knocked out this Candy Wyatt back in 2021. Knocked her out in the sixth round. Um, McCaskill was dominating that fight. She then fought Kirsty Bavington and won by split decision. How is how on earth? How was she fighting for a vacant title? How? She's 11 and 4. She's, she's been beat by Callie Reese. She's been stopped by Lina Dartu. Been stopped by Jessica McCaskill. How, how does she fight for a vacant title with, with that recently? I just don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, what we got here? Uh, Shalom. Uh, ben Shalom. Martin Bacoli is perfect opponent for Tyson Fury. Great fight. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Of all the, the matchups that's been announced recently, unless it's Andy Ruiz, then obviously Andy Ruiz should jump the queue. But I like Bacoli because we know Bacoli's going to go for it. We know he's going to stick it on him. And look, might get bashed up, probably will, but he will go for it. I, I'd rather Bacoli than... Like, I think Bacoli's going to put up a better performance than Dillian White and Chisora. I really do. So it should be a good one. I really want to see Dillian White Bacoli, by the way, after their little altercation in Poland, I think it was. But yeah, um, we'll see. We'll see. All right, I think, um, I think that's it. A bit here about Spence saying it's been a great year for boxing. The best guys are finally fighting each other. Yeah, it's been a really good year. It's been a really, really good year, and I think it's going to get better. I think Matram and Dazone are announcing their schedule soon, from August to the end of the year. Um, I, I think I, I'm trying to think. Has it been Dazone and Matram's best year? I'm trying to think of the fights. Maybe not. Don't know. But um, hopefully it's a good sort of uh, final quarter. Um, and the one right at the end, I'm guessing this is what they're waiting for. The one right at the end should be AJ Wilder right at the end, which <laughs> boy, I don't even know what to say about that one. And hopefully, hopefully there's a face off and your truly is doing it. That would be incredible. That would be like a career defining moment where I can retire back to Nigeria, having done the face-off for Wilder versus AJ. Do that shit for free. Don't pay me, I'll pay you. In fact, I'll pay you to do it. Peace.